I'm Jason Langsdorf. I'm the host of Learn With Jason, and I'm super excited to teach you about Astro today. Astro is one of the first frameworks in a long time that has made me really excited to build for the web again. You're gonna learn about how you can use Astro to build full-featured, very dynamic web apps with zero JavaScript overhead by default. You're gonna learn how to do everything from building a marketing homepage all the way through to a full-featured e-commerce app, including a cart, how we can use multiple frameworks to do that, and a whole bunch of other great stuff inside this course. I really hope you enjoy it. One of the things that I think is most exciting about Astro is that it's extremely fast to get started. I'll, I'll show you. We're going to start from a starter repo today to get some of the, the CSS and things that we don't want to spend a lot of time writing. But the getting started experience with Astro is run by CLI, and it's magical. I'll demo that in a little bit. It's very fast to build. Because Astro doesn't ship a lot of moving parts, you are capable of getting something up and running in extremely short turnaround times. If you wanna get a, a landing page up today, you can probably do it. And because of how, how it only ships HTML and CSS by default, you can also get it shipped to production today. You know, you can build the whole thing. The thing we're gonna to build today is a very full featured site that we will deploy by the end of today. And we're gonna deploy it on a mostly just a static CDN uh, with a little bit of dynamic content to handle the pieces that are actually dynamic. It's very fast to deploy. You can deploy it to just about any platform um, because it, again, by default only needs a CDN. Uh, so you are able to deploy it to AWS, to Cloudflare, Netlify, Vercel, wherever you wanna go, it, it works. It's very fast to adopt incrementally. And this is this is probably the part that I think is not the most exciting, but maybe the most relevant to a lot of folks is a lot of these frameworks, when you see somebody talk about it, they're talking about them from the context of you're going to start from scratch. You're going to all in adopt this framework and change everything over to it. And that's how you get the benefits. And if you only incrementally adopt it, when you have problems, a lot of these, these frameworks will tell you, well, yeah, you have to fully adopt the framework to get the benefits. And the thing that I find really exciting about Astro is that Astro is, is a per page benefit. You can adopt Astro one page at a time in your stack, and those pages will benefit from using Astro. So it's really nice, and because it works with whatever UI framework you're probably already using at work, you can bring these pages over without having to rewrite all the functionality of your, your app. You can take the existing React components and bring them into an Astro page and just migrate your home page to start or a particular landing page or whatever it is and use you know a reverse proxy or something to make that one page run on Astro and everything else runs on your existing stack. So it's a really nice way to incrementally move to a modern stack if you're currently working in something that would be way too big to try to migrate all at once to a new stack. It ships web standards. Um, most of what you're gonna be working with in Astro is, is just stuff that's documented on MDN. Um, you're not going to be using a whole lot of you know, custom invented stuff on Astro. What Astro has done is they've assembled things that are just web standards and put them together in a way that allows you to mostly use knowledge you already have. And again, because you're combining your web standards knowledge with your framework UI knowledge, you kind of just come in knowing how Astro works. There's only a handful of things you have to learn to be able to use Astro really effectively. And like I said early, it's, it's, you can be deployed anywhere. Um, by default, it's HTML and CSS. There's, there's nothing more versatile than HTML and CSS. And when you do get into that JavaScript part, depending on whether you're shipping it server-side rendered or uh, client rendered, if it's client rendered, again, any CDN can host an Astro site. You don't need specialized hosting. You don't have to pay the company that builds the framework to run, to run your hosting. You can put it on you know, S3 with CloudFront and run it for just about nothing. Netlify, Vercel, uh, Cloudflare, they all host it. You can also run it in a server full environment, like you can put it on render or fly or whatever you want and, and it'll work there as well. Blogs in Astro can be done a number of ways. Um, you can do it with a, a third party API. You can do it by just creating pages if you wanted to. Um, and recently, as of Astro 2, you can put in content collections, which are a way of letting Astro kind of do some of the work for us. So the first thing I wanna do is actually do like a list of blog posts. So we're gonna create the, the blog homepage and we'll do that by going into the pages directory, 
new file and blog.astro is the name of the file itself. Give it some front matter because this is an astro component and I want to import a helper function called get collection and this is generated by astro and the way that they make this work is they, they set it up like this where it says uh, astro colon content and that gives us the, um, the helpers that are generated from the schema that we created. So that's in that dot astro folder of generated stuff we're getting access to these sorts of things that, that will then be used to actually generate the page. Next up, we wanna grab our layout. So this one is going to be our page layout. And down below, we're gonna grab our blog posts. So to grab the blog post, we're gonna await and we will get our collection. And this should, if I've done my job right, there it is, autocomplete to show us the available collections. So now we have our blog posts load it into a variable from our collection, and we can use those then to build out a page. So we've got our layout. I'm gonna set up a section. That section is going to have a class of blog entries, and inside of it, we're gonna loop. So blog posts.map, and we'll call this a post. And then we wanna return a div class post and inside of that we're going to set up a we want to show the title um, the title in this case is going to be linked so a href and uh, we're going to do a bit of, of kind of string stuff here so we want our blog post to live at slash blog slash the slug so we're going to set that up and we'll grab the post dot slug now if you note, I didn't define, oh, I did define a slug. Never mind. It will auto generate a slug for you. But if you add a, a slug in the front matter, it'll, it'll use that instead. So you do have that control. Did I do that in both? I did. Um, I can maybe show that the other way if we want. Then I'm going to grab the post dot data. And now data is where, stop, where the, um, where the front matter shows up. So the, the post itself, has a few properties on it. Data is where the front matter comes in. And as you can see, as I'm, I'm hovering over the top here, we've got the date, title, and description. And I want to grab out the title in this case. Okay. Next, I'm gonna set up a time and we'll set the date time property in here. And I want that to be a post data date to ISO string, and that's because we're, we're passing it in as the, the date time attribute, which means that Google and other, other tools can you know, parse it as being an actual time. Um, not a thing you have to do, but it can be helpful for your, your various uh, SEO efforts. And then we'll do this one as a to date string because that means I don't have to format a date manually. And that makes me very happy. And these are, uh, these are browser like platform APIs. Um, they're just, this comes out as odd because Zod, we've told it that it's a date. So it makes sure that we get a date object. Next, we're gonna grab the description. And then we're going to uh, do a little, we're gonna actually just do the exact same thing we did up here. So I'm gonna copy paste this, grab out that link. Um, but instead of the title, I want it to say read post. Okay, so this is, this will get the content on the screen, but it's not styled yet. So we wanna also add a style sheet and I can grab that out of the workshop assets. We've got pages blog.css in here. And I'm just going to drop this in and save it. And get back out here, head over to the blog. And there we go. The way that forms work, uh, as a reminder to myself, is so we set the method and then we gave it a class, but we didn't tell it where to submit to. So it submit to itself, right? So we have to give it an action to tell it where to submit to. 
And we built that newsletter page to handle form submissions. So we add this action of newsletter and that now is going to send it to the right place. So let's try that one more time. Subscribe. And there we go. We're on this, we're on the newsletter page. It did a server render, it handled that post submission, and it shows us that we did in fact subscribe. Um, now does this one work without JavaScript enabled? Let's find out. It does, right? So this, this is, I think, a good example of like. Some of the things that we think are really complicated, they're complicated because we're, we're compensating for things that were made harder by tools that were made to compensate for challenges, right? And so by, by taking a step back and looking at what does the browser do, what does the platform do, we can skip some of that really complicated stuff of capturing the form submission event and then managing it. We don't have to do that on the server side. We don't have to do that on the client side. We can just, we can just say, was this form submitted? Great do some stuff with it. This is very similar to what we used to do in PHP. This is very similar to what you would have done in any backend language if you were working in, you know, really whatever, since the dawn of the web. If a form gets submitted, you grab the body out of the post and do some stuff with it, right? So very familiar from a, a server standpoint. And we didn't have to compensate for like the way that frameworks have changed events or the way that that something makes it all client side and now we're trying to figure out how to do the same things that we would do on the server on the client side. It, it just allows us to really take the idea through the platform to production in a very short span of time.